What is going on guys? I have another crazy story for you guys in the news today. This one coming from NBC. Um, talking about Arkansas's law requiring state contractors pledges not to boycott Israel uh, has court challenge. This uh, is a part of a follow-up of a story that I posted previously. Uh, it was reported by Glenn Greenwald over at The Intercept. Um, this talks about uh, the specific challenge in Arkansas and gives a little bit of background history on that. Now, for those not familiar, this is in response to widespread uh, legislation across, I believe, 26 states now with 13 other states pending concerning uh, laws that prevent or penalize boy boy boycotts of Israel. Um, some of this has already been challenged and blocked uh, in other states, and then you've seen revisions to it. Uh, in Arkansas, let's check out and just see exactly what's going on over there. In Little Rock, Arkansas, attorneys for an Arkansas newspaper asked a federal judge Friday to block a law requiring that contractors pledge not to boycott Israel, saying it forces businesses to give up their free speech rights in order to receive state money. And in every case that I've seen thus, thus far, um, it, that is the minimum uh, that it requires. In some cases, like the case on uh, that Glenn Greenwald reported on, the woman actually lost her job. Uh, because she wouldn't sign an oath saying that she wouldn't boycott Israel. Uh, this pretty obvious restriction on expression of free speech. U.S. District Judge Brian Miller heard arguments in Arkansas Times lawsuit challenging the state's 2017 anti-boycott law. Miller said he hoped to rule soon on whether to block the law, which the Times and the American Civil Liberties Union argues is unconstitutional. The law requires contractors to reduce their fees by 20% if they don't sign the pledge. So obviously this is, this is using state power and legislation to penalize uh, those who, who resist or uh, signing this uh, statement that they won't boycott Israel, which is obviously an infringement on their First Amendment rights. Um, it makes the plaintiff endorse the idea that the government can make an individual take a political position as a con condition of getting money, uh, Bertina Brownstein, an attorney at the ACLU in Arkansas, told Miller. I, I would totally agree with that statement. Um, the state has argued that the boycott isn't constitutionally protected speech. How? How is it not constitutionally protected speech? And that the pledge doesn't force the Times to take a political position. Um, well, it discriminates against those who are, so it's obviously showing favoritism and trying to enforce political ideology. It simply certifies the factual statement about whether or not the Times intends to boycott. Uh, so this this is interesting. So it doesn't discriminate against them unless they intend to support the boycott. So even though they haven't made a statement as of yet, they might in the future. And so the state wants to prevent that. So Assistant Solicitor General Dylan Jacobs said, the Arkansas law has is similar to restrictions enacted in other states, more on that later, uh, that has been challenged. The measures are aimed at a movement protesting Israel's policies towards Palestine. A federal judge in September blocked the Arizona from enforcing a similar measure. A federal judge also blocked Kansas from enforcing its anti-boycott -boy measures. I actually lived in Kansas at the time that that happened. I remember it occurring. Um, I believe that was under Governor uh, Brown back at the time. The measures so that it no longer applied to individuals and nonprofits and only applied to state contractors worth 100000 or more. Arkansas law applies to contractors worth 1000 or more. And a government contract, I, th I think it would be pretty easy to blow past that $1,000 mark. So we can, I think we can fairly certainly say this applies to almost every contractor signing a contract with the federal government. Uh, th this, that's astounding. A federal lawsuit was filed last month against a similar law in Texas. Um, that'll be interesting to follow up on both of these cases and, and see where they go. Um, but the extent of this, when well, first off, when it was introduced, this is uh, the actual line of the bill. This is S-720, Israel Anti-Boycott Act, Act uh, passed in the 115th Congress, Congress. Congress. Um, the, in, in the 2017-2018. This, this is kind of where this, this stems, stems from. from. Um, Interestingly, this, this is the, uh, the, the Glenn Greenwald article in which he reported, you can see this is a Texas elementary school speech pathologist refused to sign the pro-Israel oath. She was required now, or she, she basically lost her job because she refused to sign it. And you can go through and you can read the article. What I wanted to show you on this was the map. Uh, these are the 26 states in which this, this legislation has passed and is law on the books. These are the 13 states in which you can see that it's, uh, legislation is currently pending, and then you have the other 11 states in which the, uh, there's no legislation enacted or, or uh, implemented at, at this time. 
Um, but, but there, there are legal challenges, like I said, in Kansas and in Texas. Uh, Arkansas is apparently going through this now as well. Um, it's just shocking that, that in America, of all places, this would be legislation on the books and they could get away in, in spite of the Constitution with the First Amendment rights. Um, this, this is what I find most interesting, though. So I did a little bit of research on this as far as, like, Israeli laws concerning this. Israel had a law similar to this that was introduced back in 2011. And uh, in the Kesnet, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, that's a legislative body over there. Um, it, it was actually stricken down by the Supreme Court as unconstitutional in 2015. They don't have a First Amendment right over there. And as you can uh, see from this, this was 2017 to 2018, uh, in which this was introduced to Congress, but has mostly passed through the state legislatures um, across the United States here. Um, th that's just insane to me because the reason that they struck it down, they considered it, uh, the reaction to it was that the law had been condemned as a violation of freedom of expression, deeply undemocratic, widely criticized in the Israeli media, media and three dozen eminent law professors have described it as unconstitutional over there. Uh, the fact that Israel itself can can say that anti uh, Israeli boy boycotts uh, being penalized by the state is unconstitutional, and that uh, you know such a thing would pass in America as somehow being constitutional is, is just the height of insanity. You, you might say peak 2018. <laughs> um, anyway, give me your thoughts on this. Tell me what you think. Uh, I, I would really love to hear anybody with the opinion that, that somehow this is okay or that this is constitutional and just have it explained to me why they think that would be the case. Uh, I'll probably end up doing one more video tonight. Uh, there's another uh, crazy story about TSA agents that I saw uh, calling in sick because they're not getting paid. I thought it was pretty funny. But uh, give, me, uh, give me your thoughts and let me know what you think. Uh, I'll be back in a minute.